as we take a look at the tail of the tape for this Bantamweight bout scheduled for three rounds. It'll be Isaiah Chapman in the blue corner, Timor Valiev in the red corner. Chapman checked in at 134.8 pounds, 69-inch reach. And for Valiev, 24 years of age, 5'6", 135 and a half pounds, and his reach at 67. We now set it inside the cage. Jazz Securo has the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Sands Casino Resort in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, we now move to the World Series of Fighting Bantamweight Division. This fight is brought to you by the Green Beret Foundation. And now, introducing on the blue side of the Decagon, his record is impressive. Six victories, one defeat, standing five feet seven inches tall, weighing 135 pounds, fighting out of Akron, Ohio, introducing, making his debut in the World Series of Fighting. Fighting Decagon, Isaiah the Beast Chapman! The Southpaw Chapman is good standing and on the ground. I would see if he can close the distance so we can smother his opponent's striking game and set up takedowns with strikes. And now across the Decagon, fighting on the blue, on the red side. His record is also impressive. Seven victories, only one defeat, standing five feet six inches tall. He weighed in at 135 and one half pounds, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Dagestan, Russia, presenting Timur Lucky Valian. Timur Valia, from what I saw last time, he loves to strike, so keep the opponent just outside his reach at all times, and he needs to move to the side after every combination he throws. Your referee is Big Dan Mergliato. So with Big Dan in charge, we move to the Bantamweight division as Jessica Sutton gets go. things going here go. at the Get Sands down. Casino in Bethlehem. And this will be a very interesting fight with Valiev in the red corner, Chapman in the blue corner. Do they have a big North Star here above the city? You ready, sir? You ready? Let's go. Well, fight. we saw Valiev as he debuted at World Series of Fighting 10 with the big KO of Adam Aquaviva. And he trains, of course, under Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn, as we mentioned, some of the best coaches in the business. You know, his striking really impressed me the last time. You will never wow. beat what he's doing. Everything is different. Sets him off, just throws a kick in the air there. A lot of speed in the hands of Valiev. Single kicks, watch out though. Here we go again. There's Chapman already counters that with a big left. Chapman, no slouch though. Black belt in judo, black belt in taekwondo. Or remember the US judo national team. And he has extremely quick hands with power. And he is just, just a pure natural athlete. What a good combination to have also. Yeah. Huh? Great striking with great judo. Explosiveness. You know, look at the footwork of Valiev and what he's able to do, boss. How he changes directions on his kicks, his punches, really throws his opponent off. The whole time. Yeah. You know, it was uh, because Aquaviva last time when he was facing him, that was a good opponent too. And he just toying with him. The speed at which both these fighters like to work is very impressive. This one's scheduled for three rounds. Don't see, don't be surprised if it ends much sooner. Switching stance there, from Chapman. But naturally, this up. There we go. And a simple kick like that can change the whole outcome of the yep. right away. Actually went over the top of Chapman. Valiev just missing. It's something he does not do very often. See Valiev staying very calm, looking to his corner, nodding on what he's supposed to do. Wow. Backing up. Yep. He's caught in the guillotine here. So now Chapman locked in the guillotine. That's the big question. How tight is it? Yep. Dan Mergliata has got a great view. Again, no panic from Valiant. He's gonna pop out. He's out, yep. I wonder what happened there when Valiant stopped off his head. Maybe somebody can tweet that to him. So 
so many fighters, boss, when they when they posture up like that, the, the, the punches don't come very quick, and it's just rapid fire from Valiant. Right away there, how he passes, goes to that guard. You know, stays on him like a wetsuit. Yeah, <laughs> I like that expression. All right, now Chapman in a bit of trouble here. Goes for a side choke, maybe, if he's going to roll into him. If Chapman is going to roll Chapman. to the left, yeah. he's going to roll into a side choke. He's got to watch out for that. Chapman Bob rolls to his it. left, and he gives up the back. Stretches him out. Great striking from the back here. Valiev now says, OK, Bosch, you said I'm a great striker, but this I can do as well. Chapman drops his chin, and Valiev gets a re-grip on it and cranks down even harder. And nowadays, you know, they pull off rear naked chokes, not even around the neck. They just pull oh. the jaw in the neck of the opponent. See the blood now on the forearm of Valiev. That's coming from the nose and mouth area of Chapman. Wow. Chapman doing a great job keeping the hands up there, trying to deflect as much of these punches as he can. And see if Valiev can punch himself out. I'll training there with uh, Regal, John, and Jackson. I don't think that's it's not going to happen. happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Regal, John, man, great striking coach as well. As a lot of times people leave him out of the picture, but this guy is such a and big Jackson part of that team. Would be of one of the first guys to give him the credit. Yep. Think of some of the guys that have gone through that camp in New Mexico. Valia finding his way to Albuquerque, New Mexico, via Russia. 30 seconds. As we go under 30 seconds to go, this is just round one of this bout scheduled for three in the Bantamweight division. You should use more of the punches underneath the uh, armpit. Big looping uppercuts underneath the armpit. How much damage do you think he's doing with these punches? Well, he's keeping busy, and this is in the eye of the judges he's going to win. This round's for him. So we will go to a second round when we return to Bethlehem in the World Series of Fighting. in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Isaiah Chapman all cleaned up, ready to go in round number two as we check in quickly with Joey Varner. Thanks, Todd. I'm in the, the locker room of the champ, Marlon Moraes, and I actually talked to one of his coaches behind me, Frankie Edgar. I asked him, how much does the opponent switch affect Marlon in this fight tonight? And first off, they said that Marlon trains with different fighters, different styles all day long, so he's always used to making adjustments, and as a champion, he'll make those adjustments in the cage tonight. I also asked him about the weight of Bollinger. Bollinger had a lot of weight, but he also rehydrated to be a very big, big 170 pounds. Frankie actually thinks that's going to play against him, and as the fight goes on, it'll take his toll, making him slower and lose his energy faster. All right, very good reporting Makes coming sense. from Joey Varner. It does make perfect sense. We'll see that in the main event tonight. Marlon Moraes and Cody Bollinger, but still to go, we've got Timor Valiev and Isaiah Chapman in a second round, and Isaiah Chapman coming on strong here, taking the back of Valiev. Tried to put the hooks in there. Did you see how Valiev just stopped him from doing that? Valiev just, you know, it doesn't look like it on the eye chart, but he's <laughs> so strong. He goes from being in a bad position yeah. to, a, to a dominant position right away. Chapman, though, got a lot of power in his hands. So make no mistake, once one lands, be danger. So two knockout victories under his belt. And a submission. How difficult it is if we take a look at the power strikes all in favor of Valiev. How difficult is it for Valiev to adjust to what Chapman's doing when he switches his stance, boss? You know, I, I don't think a uh, super big deal, not for, uh, with the caliber of fighters that he right. trains with. So uh, we go back again to the training camps, you know. Look at that, let him miss, counter right low. Very nice. And then he, right away he goes for the head. You know, it didn't work out now, but that's what I meant, is switching it up the whole time. Straight punch, but I'm not going to throw it now. Now it's going to be a different one. Now you have a very well-rounded fighter. We 
documented already, trained in New Mexico with some of the best, Greg Jackson, Mike Winklejohn, some of his training partners, you think of the guys that go through that camp, uh, Cowboy Cerrone. The single kicks I'm not a big fan of, I always say it, he has to watch out for it. Spinning back fist coming from Valiant. So he's constantly giving Chapman different things to think about. Attacking low kicks, high kicks, kicks in the middle, and then he comes with the punches, and then of course he's got to defend the takedowns. It's crazy. That's uh, a book which, what's called How to Get in an Opponent's Head. One on one. That's the title of the book. Being different. Look at that nice little strike there. Just trying to get to the inside of Valier so he can get some power strikes in. As you saw just moments ago in our graphic, it has been dominated by Timur Valiev. Because his ring movement, it's really good. Just moving around the whole time, never stands at one spot. I mean, he's, he's throwing feints, he's jabs, and he comes with a kick. to see a fight tracker on Timor Valiev on where he goes in the cage mm -hmm. during one round. It's be all over the place. Yeah, that would be something. It's one of those laser traps in those uh, movies from Mission Impossible. You see <laughs> everywhere those little lines. 90 nice seconds to go here there. in round number two. This one's again scheduled for three in the Bantamweight division. And now Chapman coming forward, showing some good offense. He just can't seem to seize the momentum, speaking of Isaiah Chapman in the red trunks, on Timor Valiev. When he gets a good combination or strike, he just can't seem to capitalize on it and keep it rolling. And again, it is because you don't know what's coming. Yep. Chapman now closing in there on Valiev after nice. the missed kick. Valiev, look oh, at that, look at ties up the leg and beautifully done. gets look the takedown, and now he goes in. Nice little wizard he had there. It's an overhook. People even know what a wizard is. Valiev, just you can see the mind working, trying to figure out what he can do with this position. Probably done this a thousand times in the gym. Take a breather. Maybe go to the side of the body with knees. Not now anymore. Go for it. See, he set that up. That yep. take down. How beautiful. But he's in that in the guillotine, which yeah. Well, if you don't have your opponent in the guard, guillotine is not going to work. You're going to waste a lot of energy. Final 10 seconds here of round number two, and now the fists start raining down. Valiev in a dominant position, and we will go to a third and final round here in Pennsylvania when we return. World Series of Fighting 13, the third and final round in the Bantamweight division. Timor Valiev in the black trunks, Isaiah Chapman in the red trunks. Boss, this is what you're talking about. If you don't have it, don't waste your position for a submission. Yep, no, that's the guillotine, but he jumps right away to the side, and now by holding it, you're going to put a lot of lactic acid in your shoulders, which is going to slow you down in the striking department, which is something you don't want to have against a guy like Valiev. Chapman has certainly been a very solid opponent tonight for Valia, but it's been Valia's multifaceted attack and the way he goes after his opponent in so many different ways. You cannot focus on his striking or his wrestling or his shots or his leg kicks. He, he throws everything at you, constantly changing it up. That's a trick. You know, a fight between him and uh, Moraes would be a nice fight. Oh, yeah. Huh? Two guys with great footwork. Four minutes of this one. As you speak of Marlon Marias, he is backstage getting ready for his main event bout with Cody Bollinger. And that will be very entertaining as Bollinger really getting the notice two weeks ago at 170 pounds, having to drop about 30 before the fight and getting on the scales yesterday here at the Sands. Oof. That's why I always fought a heavyweight. <laughs> Don't want to you're, cut you're, weight. you're not a big fan of cutting weight, are you? No, I'm not. You know, just Make, keep your body happy, I always say. If you start dehydrating it from the most important fluid that it needs, I don't think it's a smart thing to do. The 
See Valiev staying very busy here. Make sure that he keeps that one foot in between so he can't close the guard. And he's not always scoring power strikes or things of that nature, but it's definitely something having his effect on the officials that are watching Keita, because he's the fighter that doesn't matter what position it is, he's always moving, always being aggressive. Always moving, and these, even these little punches, guys start defending those. Right. And when you're defending those, you kind of maybe set yourself up for a big shot. You know, so uh, you saw Sakuraba in the early days used to do that. These crazy Mongolian judo chops. Are they going to do something? No. But the right straight that followed straight down the middle, that was going to do something. And then suddenly a submission. And again here also, it's not the same strikes. You look for side choke again. And he, you know, if he can pull his right leg out now, if he can lock it up, ooh, 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 he might have a side choke. He's pulling his right leg out now. In and if he can move to the side. Wow, and right he, now Isaiah Chapman. No, he's got it on his back, yeah. He, he saw it coming, Chapman, and right away. But giving up your back to Timor Valia this is never a fun proposition. Well, it was better than getting caught in that side joke. There was really no good option, was there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan Mergliata looking in, checking on Isaiah Chapman. There's a repeat from round number one, Dan. Yeah, this is how round one ended, the exact same situation. Chapman giving up the back, Valia raining down punches left and right. And that was, I was thinking that he should do. He was going for that now. With his right hand, peel the left hand away, and then start hitting with the left. That it's just the really repetition. It's got to be driving Chapman crazy, because Valia rains down those punches, boxing the side of his head, boxing his ears. As soon as he goes to defend it, Valia sneaks in and tries to get the rear naked choke in. Yeah, mixed martial arts at his best. <laughs> Mixing it up. Chapman right now in a complete defensive mode, and as the time ticks away, this is just more points for Timor Valia. I should go for a, for a neck crank, just crank him to the side, you know, and see if he can make him turn over again. Cross face him, and then just crank his neck to the side. It will force Chapman to roll with that, because otherwise he's gonna have too much stress in the neck. And then he's gonna end up in mountain position, so now he's, he's throwing in the rib shots, and then the head shots, and then a possible rear naked choke with 45 seconds to go in this fight. And Chapman seems to have no answer. And sometimes I don't I even think it's better to, to get your opponent a mount on top of you because you can see the punches coming. Right now he can't see them coming. He holds his hands there, but he can't really see him coming. Chapman doing all he can to deflect these punches and Valia for the first time really looking like he might be getting tired because all he's doing is just raining down blows, elbows, fists. Then he goes to the midsection of Chapman and the final 10 seconds of this fight. Was that a tap? That was weird. That was a tap or just frustration from Isaiah Chapman, but this one's gonna end and Timor Valia should get the victory. Wow. We'll be back with the official word when we return to the World Series of Fighting on NBCSN. Cody Bollinger backstage, young man out of Rancho Cucamonga, California, traveling cross country to take on the champ. Marlon Moraes will have that in the main event still to come here on NBCSN. But first, we need to get the final word in a fantastic bantamweight bout where Timur Valiev really dominated Isaiah Chapman with the official word. Here is Jazz Securo. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of fighting, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judges Brent Colflesh and Gregory Monsky score at 30 to 27. Cardo Urso scores at 30 to 26. Your winner by unanimous decision to move. Lucky Valiant. So Valiev gets the victory after three rounds, a unanimous decision over Isaiah Chapman as we take a look at the auto shopper highlights from this Bantamweight bout. And early on, boss, it was pretty clear both these guys had plenty of speed in their hands and in their kicks. Yeah, nice knee there delivered by Mr. Chapman. But, uh, you know, most of the striking was done by Valiev. Round two, the same thing. You know, that was the end of round one, same as end round number two, uh, three. Great take down there. Right away moves to the opposite side of where that neck is caught, which is a very smart thing to do with guillotines. 
And here he continues round number one. Right, as we take a look at the stats, the conclusion of the second fight of the night. 185 strikes thrown by Valley of 94 of those connecting. And look at the bottom, ground strikes, 114 to 8, ground strikes, 68 to 4. Timur Valia, your winner here in the Bantamweight division. Yeah. Get ready. What you wanna do? If you don't strike first, that's when they gon' come at you. Yeah. And you know it's true. Don't let your life get worse. Being timid, that ain't cool. Nah.